My first guest tonight is CBS chief Washington correspondent and the anchor of Face the Nation. Please welcome John Dickerson. Good to see you. All right. Hey. Hi. Nice to see you again. It's good to be back. Uh, what a what a sad and strange week this has been, hasn't it? Yeah. Truly unnerving at times. Destabilizing. I mean, it was destabilizing in, in Charlottesville on Saturday, and then the more we learned on Sunday, and now, uh, in the reaction to the president's remarks, you've had more of that destabilization. Well, let's talk about Tuesday. Um, the president's um, impromptu press conference in the lobby of Trump Tower, who was there to talk about infrastructure, but it quickly fell into talking about... Um, equivocating between the resistors to the fascist elements and the people who were marching under the Nazi flag. Right. Which was uh, uh, shocking for a lot of people. You've studied the presidents. You're a, you're a student of history. You've covered politics for a long time. Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. No. And because here's the difference. Normally presidents come into these moments and they lift the country up. They are the release valve for the pressure. They do a moral stacking. They take these disturbing events and they explain to the country what's happened. And they give some comfort. In this case, the president was there, and it was clear he wanted to fight out these issues. One was that, that there were left-wing protesters, which there were. But that wasn't the key point. The key point is that the protesters there, the neo-Nazis, are antithetical to everything America stands for, and he's the leader of America. And so his fixation on the, on the question about the left-wing protesters uh, overshadowed that. And that led to conflict and fights and people speaking out afterwards when his role really as president is to release that pressure. It created more. Well, the reports are that he felt good after that press conference. He might be the only person other than David Duke, <laughs> other than his buddy David Duke, who actually felt good after that. You Why know, do you think... Uh, do you believe those reports? Are those credible reports? Well, I don't, I don't know. It's always you don't want to ever try to get into somebody else's head, I think, and, and there's a lot of that. And so, but I think you can imagine, because you know a couple of things. One, he doesn't like to feel like he's being forced into doing something. He believes in what he believes in, and he doesn't like to be told to do, f fulfill a certain kind of role. So on Saturday, when he improvised Many Sides, Many Sides, and then Monday he came out there and gave that rote statement, which reports are that it was prepared for him, that was arm twisting on behalf of his staff? I think he felt that he'd done the work that he needed to do on Saturday, that he had condemned these groups, and that also he had pointed out what, what he wanted to, the ad lib was that there were others contributing to this violence. And that was clearly something that was on his mind. He repeated it again on Tuesday. He had a point to make, and it was sticking in his craw. You could see by the emotion that he had. He, he called out the racists, but the thrust of his remarks was that he was passionate about making this point that the left wing was still involved. Mm -hmm. That's a smaller point. But he did more than that just saying the left wing was still involved. He, he also said that there were good people right. protesting the night before. And when you look at those photos, it's people with torches, um, people with Nazi insignia. And I think one of the things that was most shocking to everybody is that a president of the United States would say anyone who would march under right. a Nazi banner, whoever they are, or whatever your intention is, once you get to the event and you know it's organized by neo-Nazis, why do you stay? As Newt Gingrich said, good people don't march with Nazis. Uh, yeah. They also were chanting, Jews will not... Uh, uh -huh. By the way... Good people do not march with Nazis is the easiest clap line in the world. Well, why didn't he, why but, didn't Trump use it? He loves people to applaud This for is him. one other extraordinary thing about both Saturday and Tuesday. This is the easiest thing in the world for a president to do, which it's is a to layup. denounce, it is, it's, there's not a sports metaphor to, to capture how easy this is. <laughs> because, because... It's teeing off from inside the cup. But this... <laughs> but... But, but this is important, obviously, because these ideas are directly in opposition to the country that he leads. But secondarily, he obviously has some political difficulty here. People have associated him with these groups. David Duke is saying they're marching in his name. So he could have looked into the camera and said, I not only denounce what you believe in, but anybody out there who is going to vote for me because you think I believe in these things, I don't want your vote. I don't want anything that you represent. And I think that you should go back to where you came from. For Didn't Bob Dole do that? There's, you're exactly, 
you're exactly right. There is a tradition in the Republican Party. Bob Dole did it. Uh, George Herbert Walker Bush did it. Ronald Reagan did it, where they said this explicit thing, not in response to an event, but just in, in the hint or chance that somebody would sign up for their campaigns who had these views. And Bob Dole said it in 1996, and he said, there's the exit. I don't want your votes. I don't want to have anything to do with you. And they did this unprompted, as opposed to after an event like this, where the nation turns to a president and seeks some kind of guidance, particularly on this moral plane. I mean, that's the job you sign up for. It has that moral component. As FDR said, it's primarily a job of moral leadership. That's the job of the statesman president. That is the, the dignity that... Um makes receiving a medal from this man or the, the, the honor of being with him is captured with that behavior. He has to manifest that. You, right. You have to tend those fires as a president. It's part of the job that you have to know that this is part of your job. And often what it requires is, I mean, he clearly wanted to make an argument about his point of view. Often as president, all the time as president, you have to sublimate yourself. You have to... Uh, uh, <laughs> that is not his strength. LBJ... <laughs> LBJ used to say that being president is like being a jackass in a hailstorm. Sometimes you just have to stand there and take it. And what he meant was that there are indignities to the job or there are times where you want to, it's like a marriage. If you want to argue this until the last point, you may win or you may continue that argument, but there's a cost. So sometimes you have to say, I have this point of view and I want to get it across, but you know what? I'm not going to because there's this larger obligation my job has. And that obligation is one I have to pay attention to more than even this point I want to argue that may in fact be right, but you just, there's a cost to it. We've got to take a little break here, but when we come back, can we talk about the president's stability? Okay, stick around for that. We'll be right back with more John Dickerson. <laughs> 